joined by FS1 NFL analyst Eric Mangini. Eric, do they have a point? Your name anonymous Mangini. <laughs> are, you, are you the anonymous? First of all, I, I couldn't disagree with either one of those comments. The Browns have won one game in the last thousand days. Thank you. So the idea that they're going to beat beat the Patriots, you know, with I, me at quarterback. Yeah, I, 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 that remains to be seen. I think they may have made a lot of improvements, but I don't think that's a very fair statement. And the other the other comment that without Brady, Bill would just be another coach trying to get his bleep together. I mean, that guy needs to get his bleep together because Bill is different than other coaches and. Uh, the thing that always impressed me was the way that that he worked, and 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 uh, he knew everything that was going on in offense, on defense, on special teams, in free agency, in the draft, with the medical department. He had a grip and an understanding and a, and a big picture vision that most coaches don't have. And when I became the head coach of the New York Jets, it was daunting in the sense that I knew what kind of bar he set, and trying to to be able to match that bar. Now he had quite a few years head start. But it, it didn't change with success. If anything, maybe it got stronger. Mm -hmm. So, so that part of it, uh, I think, I think is completely wrong. And I think there's a lot of great quarterbacks that have very, they've been successful, but they're one Super Bowl, and you could argue that some of those quarterbacks underachieved. Mm. Mm. Uh, <laughs> mm. For me, um, Coach Belichick, and I believe he would have success, maybe not this amount of success without Tom Brady, because, I, you know, you have to go hand in hand. Um, there are very few head coaches that's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Skip, without having Hall of Fame quarterback. Joe Gibbs comes to mind. Uh, I think uh, Coach Parcells comes to know. mind. I don't know. Mark Rippon? I don't know. He ain't in the Hall. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what oh, I'm saying. You're, you're yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm naming the coaches mm. that's in the Hall of Fame without Hall of Fame without. quarterback. Yeah, yeah no, without, okay. yeah. All right. No, I'm saying, you know, Joe Gibbs is in there. Yeah. Bill Parcells is in there. Normally, when you get to the Hall of Fame as a coach, you know, you have a Hall of Fame quarterback. So I think they go hand in hand. But I would give a lot more of the credit to Coach Belichick for the very reasons that Coach Mangini laid out. He has to draft the salary cap era, uh, free agency, and to have to stay on top of everything. And it's almost like a college mm -hmm. where now these guys don't stay like they did in the 70s Steelers. You don't have a guy for 13, 14 years. A lot of times you're looking to turn this thing over in like three to four years. Sometimes by choice, sometimes the guy's just not by, you know, he's just not what you thought he was going to be, and you need to move on. The thing that I admire most about Coach Belichick, no matter how much they give a player, if you're not meeting the expectations that he set or that he thinks you should have for this team, you got to go. I mean, a guy gets $10 million and he's not playing well, Coach. You know, he's got to go. We give you $20 million and you're not playing like a $20 million player. You got to go. Everybody else got to prove a point. Well, I got to keep him. I got to – maybe if I – if he's a left tackler, maybe if I move him to right tackle and put him at guard, I can get some service out of him. Coach mm -hmm. Benetech said, no. We got you to play this. You're not playing this. You got to go. It's unbelievable in, 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 in free agency. The way they've been able to win – the consistency in which they've shown, it doesn't matter. Head co uh, 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 coordinators come and go. Players come and go. Now, I give you that, Skip. The constant is he and Tom Brady. But, man, for him to do that, why can't other coaches do that when they lose players and still have a great quarterback? Get that man in credit. 85%. I, th this is offensive to me. How, how much I disagree with both of you about this, because both these quotes are dead on accurate, and you can't take it because you're a coach, and, and so it, it, it threatens the position and the value of the coach. And you can't take it because you can't stand Tom Brady. I so like Tom. Th this guy has shattered the mold. He is doing things at age 40, going on 41, that we have never seen before. And what has slowly happened is that over time, I'll give you that first year that you guys broke through and upset the St. Louis Rams in New Orleans, that was 80% Belichick, and I'll give 20% of the credit to the quarterback because he was still the quarterback, and he did make the Pro Bowl, did Tom Brady that year, and I know you had to put him in positions to just sort of survive. And yeah, the people true. Mm -hmm. E-Man, you do know that year that y'all won that first Super Bowl, he threw one touchdown, the entire playoff. Yeah, yeah. so did Drew Bledsoe. Yeah. Yeah. So he did make the Pro Bowl that year, which is kind of hard to but, do. But you know, skip, at, at that point in time, yeah, everybody okay. pulled it out. Don't right. nobody go to saying. the but, ninth But he was just, just a baby, six-round yes. draft pick. I get all that. I've heard all the stories. I get that. But when it was time in the Super Bowl, when it was time to shut it down and play for overtime and try to take the quarterback, the young quarterback, out of harm's way, 
Uh, Charlie Wise said, let's just go for it. And I don't know if you give Charlie credit or Bill credit. I guess Bill's signing off big picture yeah. on that. But completion, 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 completion. I know it took a 49-yard field goal, but you you put him in harm's way. You you put the game back in the quarterback's hands in the first year of starting. He wasn't a rookie. He was a second-year player. But still, then what started to happen over time – through those first three Super Bowls, it was still more Belichick than Brady. But but once you got through the three, once Tom Brady started making Pro Bowls every year, over the last nine years, he's made nine Pro Bowls, then it started to swing toward Brady. And I think it swung all the way to 75% Brady in 2014 and 2016 in those Super Bowls. And again, th- those are extraordinary feats in the fourth quarter of those two Super Bowls. Those are the two greatest fourth quarters ever played in the history of the biggest game in your sport. The one against Seattle, a Legion of Boom, and then the overtime and the fourth quarter against Atlanta. You, you just can't find bigger, better fourth quarters than those two. And he, he beat Atlanta without Rob Gronkowski. You're always saying, oh, he's the biggest matchup problem in pro football. He wasn't even there. And he did that to the Atlanta Falcons, who were seen to have the hottest defense in football going in to that game. And then last year, he did it without Julian Edelman. He got them to the Super Bowl. He beat Saxonville, the hottest defense in pro football, with 138 yards passing in the fourth quarter. It was just miraculous what he pulled off. No Julian Edelman and gets to the Super Bowl and sets the all-time playoff record with 505 yards and scores 33 points, which were not enough because Belichick's defense gave up 41 in part because Malcolm Butler was standing crying on the sideline and could not get in the game for reasons we still don't know. But the the pendulum keeps swinging back to Brady. The the older he gets, the more credit he deserves because now it's 80-20 to me. Because it's still the hardest position to play in sports by far. It's the hardest position to fill, to draft for. It's just hard. It's it's a swing and miss every year. Half the quarterbacks drafted will be bust. And I believe coaching football is the hardest hardest of all the coaching jobs. No. Here's the, here's the thing, Skip, is, is I don't believe Bill would be what Bill is without Tom Brady. And and we saw that. He was one winning season in six years prior to Tom Brady. Yeah, including the first one in, in the Foxborough. First New England. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, however, I don't think Tom Brady is Tom Brady without Bill Belichick. We talked about the first year on yesterday, but all the subsequent years, the hard coaching that he's received – the, the infrastructure that's been put in place around him and around that team allowed him to excel. That marriage works because they, they work so well together. I think if you take either one of them out of that equation, we're looking at a very different, different scenario. Now, as time go- gone on, yeah, I, do I think other people could take Tom Brady five years ago, seven mm-hmm. years ago, and win with him? Yeah, absolutely. Do I think Bill Belichick could go and take other really good quarterbacks and, and win with him or even... Aaron Rodgers. You think Aaron, he could win a Super Bowl with Aaron Rodgers? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Oh. Uh, we, we, you, don't think that, <laughs> you don't think a long time ago that locker room would have mutinied on Bill Belichick without that quarterback saying, let's do it his way. That's leadership. That's strength. That, that's, but at, at, which, at which point are you saying they would have mutinied without the quarterback saying, just, let's do it that way? Yeah. There was no, yeah. There's no chance for mutiny there. Everybody understands. Well, at some point, if the whole locker room says, we're just not going to do it this way, you know what's going to happen? You're going to start losing football games. I, I get that. And there was there was the the idea that there was going to be a mutiny after we, we cut Lawyer Malloy. Lawyer. Mm-hmm. And remember, that was they, early, they lost early the locker on. room. Yeah. And I we lost it. the first game, 30 to oh, whatever. 31-0. 30, yeah, 31-0. Mm-hmm. And go 14-2 and win the Super Bowl. There are so many things that happen during the course of the season that the head coach has to be able to control. The quarterback has an impact mm-hmm. on that. And an impact, especially on one side of the ball, but there's all the other factors that go into play that that the quarterback has nothing to do with. Do, do you realize how many games he pulls out of the hat, like like pulling a rabbit out of your hat, that saves the coach from himself because Belichick gets away with swings and misses on player after defensive player. There's, there are a lot of players have come and gone there. And you get away with it because the quarterback, what do you call it, makeup artist, yeah. you know, like, like you're the one. He a lot of mistakes right. and blemishes. He, he covers all those mistakes. He allows Bill to operate freely where the, the, Bill's not held to any high standard about his drafting or acquiring players because if he swings and miss, it doesn't matter because they just keep winning championships or getting to Super Bowls. But Coach Belichick, think about this, Skip. In 18 years, Coach Belichick has given Tom Brady 14 times a top 10 scoring defense. Isn't that how you win? It's not about yards. They've been talking about they give up all these yards. They don't put yards on the scoreboard, do they? 
But it's not just the defense. It's the special team. Yes. It's, it's all three phases. Pinning teams down, making them go 80, 90 yards. It's the idea. And this, this is a lost art of playing complementary football. A lot of guys with a great quarterback are like, we're going we're gonna to go, we're going to go, we're going to go. And they don't worry about the defense. They don't worry about special yeah. teams. But in New England, there's this idea of playing complementary football where if you've got to run the ball 50 times because your defense is, is mm. not playing as well, you, you do that. If you've got to do certain things defensively to complement the offense, you do that. And that, to me, is, is the distinction. And whoever said that, you know, he's just another guy, that's, that's what separates him is the big picture, the vision the way it all fits together, the game plan to win the game. Now, can you do what they've done without Tom Brady? No, it's no. There's no chance of it. But I don't know if Tom Brady is Tom Brady without Bill. And they did that first Super Bowl. That defense did help hold the Saints to like 20 points less than what they normally score. Am I correct? Okay. Have, did y'all run a pick six? Did y'all have a pick six in that game, Tyler? In, in the Super Bowl? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have, have any of those defenses, Early. would would you rank any of those New England defenses in the top 20 all time? No. If, if they had a Ray Lewis Ravens or an 85 no, 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 Bears no, 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 or a Steel no. Curtain they, or they, they never had, Doomsday they, Dallas? They, they really they, never had that season. No. Nope. Everybody forgets that Bill Belichick was the head coach of the Browns the year before they became the Ravens, and he's the one who traded back to get the 26th pick. And that whole scouting staff went from Cleveland to Baltimore, yeah. who took Ozzie. Jonathan Ogden hey, Ray. and Ray Lewis, and everybody was trained under Bill at that time. And so all those Ravens early successes, it was built with the infrastructure that, that Bill okay, put but in place. Bill didn't do it. Bill didn't have he one would've. of his in New England. Well, he just didn't. And has he ever given Brady a, a top five receiving core? He had Randy Moss for a, an instant. It was really for, for about two years because then Randy started to, to turn back into so, Randy. You know, his pro skip problem is, if a guy doesn't have, if the linebacker is not Ray Lewis or the D lineman is not Reggie White or the DB is not Dion or the wide receiver is not Antonio Brown, they're not any good. What okay, but they don't have any of those guys. It's Edelman and Amendola and Chris but they're good. But they're good, but they're good he, for what He makes them good. He, no, no, it's good for Brady. No, 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 no. Because he, he'll make anybody but good. But here's the thing. No, you need to fit that system. Coach Belichick preaches system and culture. Everybody can't play for New England, Skip. I don't care. Everybody says they want to win, but they can't They can't win like he wants you to win. Hmm. There's a difference in that now. If you're going to let me have do my thing, I can show up late, and we win some. No, 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 no. He said, this is the way we do it. We practice like this. We meet like this. We do this like this. Everybody can't do that, Skip. Trust me. Hmm. As a guy that's played with a lot of different coaches in a lot of different systems, it takes some time. I mean, I came under Dan Reeves, who's old school, came under, who learned his craft under Tom Landry. I know him very well. So you know he's mm -hmm. old, old school. Mm -hmm. I came in up under that. So it was easy for me to adjust to anybody. But had I came in under Mike Shanahan and then go into that system, mm -hmm. that's a whole different ball game. That's why it's hard for guys to come to New England as opposed to guys to play there, mm. that start there, because that's all they know. It's not for everybody. <laughs> no. It's not, and you... You got to know what you're getting into mm. when you go there. It is not for everybody. That is <coughs> where we're going to leave it. Eric, thank you for the insight on this. Mm. All right, coming up, will the Lakers be a title contender this season with LeBron? We'll discuss yeah, that Shannon, will with they? Eddie House next. <laughs>